Quincy Pariso started her journey as a Youth for Christ member in the Philippines in 1999. She became Singles for Christ in 2010 in the Philippines and moved to SoCal West B3 in 2013. She served as a household head, area conference coordinator, and a CLP team leader. She is now a member of Couples for Christ, happily married, and a mom to Timothy Gerard. She's an auditor by profession, but loves to letter for Christ. Everyone, please help me welcome Queen C. Thank you, Kimi, for that introduction. Again, my name is Queen C. Ignacio Paraiso. I've been in the community for 21 years now, and it's always a joy to recall my faith journey since I became a member of You for Christ back in 1999. CFC has been a blessing to me and my family. This is where I met my husband. We were both serving You for Christ back in our college years. I'm truly grateful for this community that brought me closer to God and allowed me to experience His love through our brothers and sisters. Here, I found my closest friends and extended family. Moving from the Philippines to Soka and having Singles for Christ family here helped me transition and actually enjoyed living here, serving God with wonderful people. Now, we are members of Couples for Christ Soka West B3, and I'm excited for our baby to grow up in this community as well. Oh, it's such a joy to see him raise his hand during our virtual conferences and um, even in our household meetings. That's a little bit about me. Welcome brothers and sisters to our Word Made Art workshop. I'm very excited to lead this workshop and I'm excited for you as well because I believe that you are in this workshop for a reason. I'm not sure where you are in your creative journey or faith journey, but I hope to inspire you through this workshop. We will be creating and writing letters. First of all, let me tell you, you can totally learn this art. You don't need a beautiful handwriting to build the skill. So Christmas is coming. Maybe you would like to level up your gifts or write your greetings in calligraphy or write their names beautifully. Or this is your sign to open up a creative shop online. Adding calligraphy to your cats will just take you to the next level. Imagine your baked goods with your calligraphy. How cool is that, right? Or are you engaged and would like to DIY some of your wedding decorations? Or maybe you're just here to check this out and that's okay. I think you'll still benefit from this workshop. So how did I get myself into calligraphy and lettering? I've always loved to doodle and draw letters. I use a journal to document my reflection and just make it creative and more interesting by drawing letters and adding some doodles. I use it in my reflection on readings and homily. Sometimes if I don't have if I don't have a pen and I just want to listen to the homily, I record it and letter it at home and go back to it at a certain period of my life. During talks, especially here in our community, we have a lot of talks. Drawing letters keep me engaged and just actively participate by writing my, um, my notes and what I've learned from the talks. Sometime in 2016, inspired by the trending calligraphy lettering on social media, in social media, I started my official lettering calligraphy journey. So I got married in 2016, but the desire to, le to learn calligraphy came after. A couple friend from Singles for Christ asked me to write their table names, which is their favorite places, and add some calligraphy to the welcome table. And that launched my calligraphy career. I was inspired to help couples create and add something beautiful in the wedding celebration. I enrolled in classes to improve my skill. These are all online classes. Um, initially, I was just doing YouTube and um, scrolling social, scrolling Instagram and Pinterest. But eventually, um, I enrolled in, uh, in a class. My first class is from Amanda, Amanda Ernil. I want to show you um, how I improve my skill. Um, the classes can go from 100 to $500, but I'm just so excited at that time. And I, I did uh, spend some money to get, a, get into class. And I think the class would just, um, would just help you focus on because when you search YouTube and uh, Instagram, it's just a lot of uh, types, a lot of styles, and just enrolling in a class would just um, summarize them for you and give you a and give you a path to improve your lettering. And um, 
but I do uh, wanted to share with you that uh, a nice platform, a good platform that I used, um, which is not that expensive, is the Skillshare. It has it. Ha it do have. Sorry, it has an annual subscription, but it is a cheap, cheaper way to explore because they have two months free. See if you, you like it. And um, there are a lot of classes in there. It's not actually just um, lettering and uh, calligraphy, but there are tons of tutorials from marketing to photography, photography from um, what else, from selling online, all those, uh, all those, um, skills can be learned through skillshare and if you want to um, share your your talent as well you can use that platform so um while you, you using skillshare was able to explore on traditional calligraphy an example is the copper plate and spin serial it's more form formal there's a certain way of writing letters and there are established letter forms while modern calligraphy which is what we will be exploring tonight. You can create your own alphabet to reflect your own style. And um, you can use a brush, a watercolor. You can also explore chalk lettering and it's all there. There are a uh, tutorial for each, um, for each material and in, in Skillshare. And also you can learn um, lettering. Lettering is, um, so calligraphy is writing the letters and lettering is drawing the letters. So you are combining shapes, shapes and graphic elements you are using as many strokes as necessary you add uh, thicker lines and um, you can go back and edit your work and um, until you're happy uh, so but by, by that you are actually drawing the letters versus writing them and another um, another tool that you can use to explore lettering and calligraphy is an iPad um, if you don't want to be carrying pens, watercolor, iPad lettering will give you the convenience of different to of using different tools with your iPad and Apple Pencil. I use this app, uh, Procreate app, but there are other apps that you can explore. But I really love Procreate because um, they always have an update and just making sure that this is uh, this is very helpful for artists. So the the pen the the apple pencil can be a brush a watercolor it's just amazing you can um uh, you can be sitting and just um exploring and just making your mind uh create beautiful things with this with this app i really love this app um there's a fee to get this app but it's totally worth it i really want i really encourage you to get this app because it will just um Take you to the next level so um i'd like to share with you my project so far i, I mentioned earlier that my uh, my friend um asked me to 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 letter for their wedding and um in that same year um another wedding another wedding came and we just helped them um it's actually my first time using the so the deep pen the pointed pen with with the one you dip in an ink and i wrote like a hundred um guest names i i had fun doing that so we do weddings and um bridal showers like the welcome to um to isa's bridal shower and then we do have birthdays as well i um some friends and some families asked me to write a birthday greeting or like a welcome um welcome welcome to the birthday as well and a personal level it just gives me um it just helped me get uh, my personal giving was uh improved <laughs> just actually just writing their names in uh in a beautiful way in calligraphy um they appreciate it i remember i have like um two christmases ago i gave them like a simple gift i got from I, I think I got from Amazon and I wrote them in, uh, I wrote their name in calligraphy and up to now that label is still on their table. They just love how their names are being written. So, and also for um, in the office, I am the go-to person for addressing our birthday cards, baby showers and all that. So, so if someone's birthday is coming up, they're on my desk and asking me to, to write the cards. So I love that this calligraphy and lettering is helping my office mates as well and it just took my journaling to the next level because having that calligraphy and calligraphy letters in my journal uh, ma makes it more um, organized as well and um, one of the projects that I also had since I've 
since I started this journey is and is my IG account. So my IG account is at Letters by Q. So follow me, guys. <laughs> I created this account to document my progress and spread positivity. Um, there's so much negative in this world, and I just wanted to contribute to the positivity. And what is more positive and promising than the truth? which is the word of God. So I started lettering more Bible, Bible verses and scriptures. And I'd like to share with you my dream projects as well. I'd like to give power to these dreams and um, I'd like to share with you. Um, I do want to create a lettering in a bigger scale like a mural. And it is a dream of mine to, um, to design a book cover using this calligraphy and lettering skills that I build over time. And one of the dream projects that I have is building a community of Catholic letters for Christ. When we were, um, when we are building these talks, when we were building this talk, Kimi just, uh, I want to thank Kimi for this one because he, she just pushed me to just do it, you know, and just own this dream. So guys, um, brothers and sisters, um, this workshop is only for 45 minutes to one hour. I, I cannot teach you everything that I know or you know I think um, we can all benefit from a group which will be a follow-up after this workshop so we created a, an FB group for this workshop which is word made art workshop so we will be um, we will be supporting each other for for your progress and cheering you on on this um, newfound um, talent and skill <laughs> so um, I would also like to share with you, there are five lessons I learned in my creative journey that I would like to, to share with you tonight. So number one is just start. Yes, you can do it. Again, you don't need a nice handwriting, handwriting to rock this. It's totally learnable. So I'd like you to pick up your pen and paper and we'll dive in after our short talk. Start. Let's start right now. So we'll do, go ahead and write fully alive and that a piece of paper. So you can do it in cursive form or your regular handwriting, just write fully alive. So you can already check off start. <laughs> so um, we'll go back to that later. Hopefully you did your fully alive writing in there. All right, so um, starting though, we have to start with the basic. We will be discussing the basic strokes tonight so that you can um, build from there. Don't skip this step. You will thank me later. It's just the best way to start. So second is keep creating. Keep in mind that it's progress, not perfection. Stop scrolling and just create, you know? Um, just a quick tip, you can pin the works you love and see if you can determine the common theme from, from where you are drawn to. And do you like whimsical or you're more into uh, traditional calligraphy or you want, you really love how watercolor works and um, having that having that collection would actually help you determine what uh, what tools you're more, more drawn into. But again, um, iPad is really cool where you can just use everything. <laughs> um, so, but just keep creating. Do not be overwhelmed on what you see in, so, in, so, ah, in social media. <laughs> I understand that you would want to create something like what you see, but remember, it took them years to be in that level. Some of them are illustrators. Some of them have design backgrounds. Some of them have been doing this for years. So especially if you're in a beginner level, it could be frustrating to see those works and compare what you have. But I'm telling you guys, stick with the basic strokes and in no time you'll see how you will improve your skill. So do not be overwhelmed on the tools and pens as well. I've been mentioning, I've been mentioning this, but um, knowing what you really want and uh, not buying on set will just uh, save you money and will save you time. So it could be addicting, but knowing what you want out, out of this will help you focus on the basic and building your skills. So the third one is Practice, practice, practice. I cannot emphasize this enough. Enough. The basics are pretty boring, boring, but very important in building your skill. Like any other skills, you have to be intentional in what you want to accomplish. The more you practice, the more you become confident with your strokes. Just doing the just doing the worksheets alone, you'll see the difference. 
So another way of practicing as well is um, doing lettering challenges. And there's Bible lettering challenges on Instagram. And also, if you join our group, we will be creating those challenges to help us practice this craft. And um, it could help as well to have your daily prompts like um, the daily readings. Um, you can use that daily readings. What word struck you, um, it will help you just keep on building from that basic, uh, basic skill. Number four, um, calligraphy and lettering increased my faith. It allowed me to express my faith through sharing my work. And most importantly, this allowed me to dip, deepen my relationship with the Lord. When you do calligraphy, you actually slow down. And I use this quiet time as my prayer time. You'll see later during my creative process that I write the word multiple times. And as you write the word, um, as you reflect on his word, it just allows you to listen to what the Lord is telling you through that. So through leathering for the Lord, help, it helped me listen to him. And, I, and as I seek him, God actually reveals himself, who he is. He is the Holy One. We are only capable of being holy because we have a holy God. And I always, I, when I'm into... Um, in my difficult times, I just always remember God is God. In my prayer, you know, sometimes I would just um, I would just praise him and just start with who he is. Because as I, say, as I say, God is God. As I say, you are my father. As I say, you are my savior. As I, as I praise him, you know, like God is God. So your problem just... Uh, <laughs> is nothing because you have a god so i love uh, i love that through this calligraphy and lettering it just allowed me to get closer to jesus and it allowed me to reflect on his promises to hope to put my trust in christ's promises and rely not on my own strength this pandemic actually um it's so hard to to think normal to be sane to keep saying, right? Um, we can't rely on our government alone. We can't. We can't rely that vaccine will solve all this issue. But knowing who God is, and knowing that He has a plan for our life, and He knowing that He loves us so much, would just help us hold on to to a, to the truth, and which is um, which is God. But on uh, but. All of this we can only do with the help of the grace of the Lord. And I'm really thankful that during these times, um, God has revealed himself to me and I get, I get to know him more. It also allowed me to discover myself and uh, my dreams, the desires of my heart, my, what he wants for my life. I've also learned this, the virtue of patience. This skill has taught me a lot about patience, which is just helpful as well in my married life right now. <laughs> and um, lastly, I'd like to share with you the value of time. Um, during this pandemic, I've been listening to, uh, to podcasts and one um, podcast that I listen to is uh, hosted by Leah Darrow. He's a, she's a former Victoria's Secret model and Dr. Greg Bataro, Executive Director of Catholic Psych Institute. He is the author of Catholic Mindfulness. So um, their topic uh, during this time is remembering your, your death. They have another topic with it, which is before you even start dating. Oh, I love this one. I, I can't stop but agree on what they were saying when they were discussing this. But um, in a uh, to summarize this all, the question is, how will you be different after this time? It is my hope and prayer that you spend time in prayer and reflection and answer this question. As Singles for Christ, you have so much time, so much space in your life to make a decision on how you spend your time. Also, this is the best and your most available time to deepen your relationship with the Lord and serve Him, to lay the foundation and strengthen your bond with Jesus to be fully alive. I could really attest to that since having a baby, it's just a different level of challenge in managing your time. But let me tell you too, that it's a different level of joy. <laughs> 
Anyways, going back, I'm grateful that I came across this hobby, which led me to a deeper relationship and a meaningful encounter with the Lord. Talking about the luxury of time, now more than ever, you guys have a lot of time in your hands. So what are you making, what are you doing with your time? Quick check, how did you spend your last seven months in quarantine? What quarantine hobbies did you discover or get yourself into? Have you become a quarantine chef? <laughs> or have you whipped Delgana coffee? Have you mastered weeping Delgana coffee? Um, have you become a plant mom or a plant parent? Or are you doing TikToks and uh, YouTube videos? Or just enjoying Animal Crossing or binging Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Disney, <laughs> whatever those are. But it is my hope and prayer that I spark an inspiration for you to explore this art. And you know what? Um, I would love for you to hear that during the quarantine, uh, you've learned calligraphy and lettering. And you just uh, got closer to Jesus Christ through this crowd. And um, that's it for tonight for our short talk, let's dive in to calligraphy and lettering. Before we jump in to the basic strokes, let's go back and define lettering versus calligraphy. Lettering is actually drawing letters. So you can do the necessary number of revisions or modifications until you are happy with what you see. So here, um, I already made this, a uh, read. I have already written this lettering and you can go back and just add some strokes where you now try to draw the letters. Again, um, script style is not the only style. There are a lot of style where you combine the lines and the shapes and all that to create those letters. And as compared to calligraphy, where we write the letters in one stroke, there is no erasing or readjusting. So for this workshop, since it's a beginner level workshop, we would start practicing with a brush pen. Simply because it's much easier to learn how to work with brush pen compared to the to the traditional pointed deep pen. So brush pens, they have soft um, soft tip that would help you create those thin and thick lines. So I'll show you, um, so this is a dip pen. It's a straight holder, it's made up of a nib and you, you dip it in an ink to create those letters. Um, when you get a hang of using this um, brush pens, you'll be able to use any, any tools like the deep pen or the watercolor or you know whatever um, tools that you would love to explore later. So in, a, in this exercise, we will be using the rhodia pad. It's a smooth paper where it's nice to practice our brush pens using a uh, smooth paper. So what are the tools that we can use in practicing calligraphy? Your number one most trusted friend is your pencil. Your pencil you use for your sketches and drawing your guides as well. But you can actually letter, practice your calligraphy using your pencil by creating those lines. See, um, So the basic is when you go up, no pressure. And then when you go down, you're applying pressure. So pen. This is your pencil. And then I know um, a lot of you doesn't have a brush pen right now, but you, you can actually practice with your, um, with your ball pen. This is my Pilot uh, G2 pen. I love this pen. I have a lot of uh, Pilot G2 pens in my purse, just to know um, when I get the chance to let her, <laughs> at least I have something. Um, so, Pilot, how you practice with that is actually, it's not, it's more lettering now, but you can mimic the thick and thin lines by adding a second line where your um, stroke is going down. So you add a second line, this is where your stroke is going down. 
and then add a second line, add a second line, and you just fill it in. I'll write it again just use just so you see how it's gonna look like. And see how, what the difference of the thick and thin lines are. And then the next one is my personal favorite, which is the Tumble Feud in Nisoki. This is a small brush pen, and this is how it looks like. Love, love this brush pen as well. So it's from Tumble. And another one, if you are working with larger um, larger lettering, you can use this Tumble, um, Tumble brush pen. It's Tumble dual brush pen. The other one has its regular marker. So that one is from Tumble. It's made in Japan. So that one is here. This one is good for practicing as well. And you can see a lot of artists using this Tumble um, brush pen they have it comes in different colors and it's just it's more it has more flexible flexible tip that's how you can create um, how you can create thicker downstrokes there's another one if you have a younger brother or sisters or i don't know i think you may have it um on hand grab it and you actually you can practice with this uh with this marker so if you're going down so you don't have you don't need a fancy tool to get calligraphy started if you have this pen laying around your house grab it and it's actually a good way of practicing your thin and thick downstroke so those are the tools that you can start with so now we move on to our basic strokes so with our basic strokes um we will be practicing the upstroke, the downstroke, overturn, underturn, the compound curve, the oval, and the ascending loop, and the descending loop. If you look, if you look at it, you can already um, you can already see that these are the basic strokes in creating your letters. These are your entrance strokes. See your H, right? You combine this; these are already your H. So, mastering these basic strokes would just take your calligraphy and even your handwriting to the next level all right so let's start doing the abstract we will be using our tumble brush pen for this exercise so upstroke is you use the lightest pressure so um to achieve this, you have to make sure that you are holding your pen comfortably and um, you're doing it in a 45 degrees angle. So you are using, when you do the, your upstroke, you only use the tip of the pen to write your letters. So um, don't be frustrated. At first, you'll have a shaky... Um, shaky hands but you have to actually do it slowly from the bottom up right you have to be um nice and slow and you are doing it in a constant speed this takes a lot of practice you guys but again i'm telling you this workshop work sheets are totally a game changer so 
go ahead and complete a page or two we're doing these exercises and it's just amazing how it will take your calligraphy to the next level um the second stroke is the down stroke so you're just applying pressure as you do it so starting from the top to the bottom it's depending on your style like how much slant you want but you have to be consistent in doing that so if you're doing it in a in a in a i don't know what degree is this but if you're doing it your thick stroke can only be this Here. compared to if you're doing uh, 45 degrees right it's pretty boring guys but it's really gonna help you uh, build your uh, skills and your foundations in doing your calligraphy the next one is the overturn so for the overturn, you start light and you add pressure. So make sure that they are actually parallel to each other. All right? It takes practice, you guys. Oops. So have to. We have to add pressure and then light pressure. Add pressure and then light pressure. Add pressure, light pressure. Add pressure and then light pressure. So you... Right? It's very slow. I'm in a hurry, so... <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> so you start um heavy and then you release and do light light pressure for overturn is you start up light i think that's this is wrong guys you guys when you go down it's uh you apply pressure so um for overturn, you start with a light pressure and you start to go down, right? By adding pressure. Whoops. You start. Yeah. See that? Um, nice and curved. I have to slow down to master this um, strokes so the third one is the compound curve once you have you have the hang of it and uh, you're able to to do this without having to remind yourself of the thin and thick stroke you can now practice a compound curve which you start light add pressure and then you release and light pressure right pressure light pressure pressure light pressure that's your overturn oh sorry compound curve and then the next one so you can you can, can you, you can already see what letters are made up of those um, compound curves right the next one is the oval it's very tricky you need to practice this one um i would start with a light pressure like something in the middle not in the middle but um not not on top right um you start with the light pressure and then add pressure and then okay so once again light pressure pressure you have to start releasing your pressure before you go down because here is what it's gonna look like if you are late in your um in releasing the pressure so i would suggest 
start releasing the pressure before you reach the bottom oops it takes practice you guys um don't be so excited and um skipping this step because these are really really important sorry if i keep on repeating myself but i have to emphasize that this um this really takes a lot of practice too um the next one is the ascending loop all right so this is already you can already see that this is your h what else k right the letters that we'll be using this one so your letter h light pressure pressure Light pressure, pressure. Oh my gosh. I actually just enrolled um, myself to the Show Me Your Drills class by Happy Ever Crafter. Just to, again, sometimes, you know, you think you're so good already, but in reality, you know what? You're not. <laughs> I mean, um, it's always good to know where you are and acknowledge that, you know, you need to practice. So this one is the descending loop where you go down heavy and then release pressure and apply right light pressure. Nice and smooth. Nice and smooth, right? Nice and smooth. So these are your basic um, strokes. One more. Oops. So these are your basic strokes that would help you create your letters to complete the alphabet. So you will, you will quickly notice that the more you practice, the more confident you feel with your stroke. You'll build that muscle memory and in no time you'll be um, writing your letters in a more confident manner. So let's try to apply the basic strokes in writing our alphabet. How do we do that? Um, so let's start with letter A. The oval that we practice, right? Okay. So it's made up of um it's made up of okay. Of your basic strokes, your entrance stroke, right? C, um, and then your G, your oval, and then your descending loop. Oops, your entrance stroke, and then your oops. Right. So these are the strokes that we practiced earlier. Entrance stroke, and then your loop. Oops. Right. Down strokes, up stroke, down strokes, up stroke, down strokes. And then your letter N. Half stroke, down strokes, entrance, your oval, and then your how to call that? Um, ascending loop, descending loop, your oval, and then your descending loop, but in another way. This is your R and your S. 
entrance your T. You can experiment with your crossbar and then your letter U. V, oops. Close that, sorry about that. No, okay, W. X. Then your Y, your descending loop, and then your Z. So try to practice that and you can get um, consistent letters, uh, consistent loops. So with practice, you'll um, perfect that one. So that's how we wrote a letter, how we wrote the letters of the alphabet using the basic strokes that we learned earlier. So now let's see if we can uh, create, we can come, let's come back to the fully alive that you letter earlier. So let's do that. I believe I assumed a lot of you guys um, used a ball pen. And so I ask you to write fully alive, right? Fully alive. So using that um, word and using that principle of the thin and thick strokes, You would just draw a second line where you are going downstroke and fill it in. I hope you're doing it with me, guys. Just add a second line on your downstrokes and fill it in. See how that looks? All right? Okay. Whenever you're doing the downstroke, you're just making it thicker by drawing a second line and fill it in, filling it in. See that? It's just and if you just write it. This is how it's written earlier, right? And adding those lines are just gonna make it prettier. Am I boring you guys or are you excited to do your crafts as well? Hopefully, um, you're now uh, confident that you can start and learn this craft versus I can never do that, right? It is uh, it is learnable, <laughs> but you do need a lot of practice. So let's try it with our um, Tombow Fudinosoki and see how you would create those thick and thin lines without needing to draw a second line. I'll write letter A different this time. I'm, I just love the freedom using uh, modern calligraphy because you'll just have an opportunity to explore different letters. So that's using our Fury Nisoki. Now let's try to use the Tombow brush pen can just see how bigger those thin and thick lines are. Right. Mm -hmm. I love the sound of the... It's normal, you guys, that scratching thing. Um, no matter how hard you press, that's the flexible knees are designed to mm -hmm. 
are designed for that um, purpose. So that's fully alive using our Tombow brush pen. Um, let's do the Crayola just to to show you guys that you don't need a fancy pen to create beautiful letters. And also I like to let you know there's one that I usually get from Daiso. It's really cheap. It's a Zebra. The brand name is Zebra and it's really good for for practicing calligraphy as well. So it's cheaper. I think it's just a dollar or so or a two maybe. And you can practice on that one. It's kind of similar with the Fidunosuke brush. It's a small brush. Okay, so that's fully alive. And um, to take it to the next level, after you master those basic strokes, you can actually um, practice another skill, which, which is drawing flourishes. I have this one, let me... Um, so you can um, start working on it's not um, there is a there is a worksheet that you can work on so you can uh, master those those loops and flourishes and it will just make it easier for you to do this so um, you can add some stars and you know this one is real easy and you can add some banners as well let's see if we can try to redo that using this um, letters that we did earlier um, so let's write fully alive. I mean, I just want to show you how I practice a lot using my GTEC pen. I mean, it's, you can practice those flourishes using your ballpoint pen. Sometimes you're just more, more sometimes you're just more confident using this when you're not into, um, into brush pen yet, but see how beautiful those, um, flourishes will do with your piece right now i don't know i don't wanna and then you'll learn how to <laughs> whoops you learn how to uh, to do your lay layout as well it's not thoughtfully done sorry you yeah <laughs> uh okay but you can um but you get the point right you're creating um flourishes and um it's not an overnight thing you guys um you can practice this um and in no time you can actually be able to create beautiful beautiful loops and flourishes so one favorite of mine is to just use a teardrop let's do this like a teardrop here teardrop over there and then just fill it in or you know you can leave it um leave it white it's cool as well and then here i think i want to write it here it just gives it character but if you want it to be just the lettering that's fine as well it really depends on your style but I just want to show you how you can add character to your piece by adding just, you know, see that small circles? Like how it gives it a different touch. Some days I want um, whimsicals, but some days I just want it paint plain black and white. But it's really up to you guys. And another one is you can just draw like pauses and vary them in sizes right and, or you know you can do some asterisk um and just add some that's again it just gives it a different character it really depends on your style um and the banners don't be intimidated with how we draw banners but there's also um there are a lot of tutorials online as well and they'll show you how to draw i thought i can't make it but you know what it's totally doable right so that's your banner see how those basic lines would give you a banner <laughs> nice right and maybe you want to 
style your envelopes, your your checks, just kidding. <laughs> and write the vendors in calligraphy. How cool is that? <laughs> so you the beauty of the calligraphy as well is that you can combine it with um, lettering and it's ju it's just it just gives you a lot of options see um, this is a block lettering you can just you know write it and then lettering you can come back and just add letter uh, add um, strokes until you're happy so that's why it's lettering I love drawing letters it just gives you freedom to create letters and add your style into it All right. in the beginning you'll see you'll catch yourself just copying but I think that's okay if you just use it for practice but eventually you'll um, develop your own style as well so um, this one is also a simple simple line but it just adds a different um, vibe on your piece so hopefully um, you're still with me <laughs> and um, I believe the basic is really what you would start you would start with and you will go places from there. <laughs> it's just um, it's, it's a really cool hobby. It's it's to me personally, I've gained a lot from it and if you guys want to explore this art again we invite you to join our fb group and um see you there i'll be showing you um one more thing i i want to show you how i do my bible verses and um and just to show you guys how how these pieces are being made from 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 scratches Now that we've learned the basic strokes of calligraphy, let's dive in and create a Bible verse piece. So how I start is I write the verse using my pen and see where for tonight we'll be using the anchor verse for this conference, which is from 1 Peter 1.15. Be holy yourselves in every, in every aspect of your conduct. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can easily divide this verse into three. It really depends on the Bible verse. Some of them are long, you know, some are short. But this one, I think um, when I was uh, creating it, I'm happy about this simple layout. So um, we'll be using that. And... So applying what you've learned on the basic strokes, um, I write the Bible verse using a brush pen. And so this is my first draft. But see, I don't like that it has a lot of space. And so I write it again. And this is my second draft. Um, here, I still think that I can... Um, I can tighten up this space right here and then this is also your opportunity to see um, where you can improve so like for example I don't really like how this F looks like and here I think I the transition is just not that good and then my R you see how I write R different ways and then what else um take your time and see you know how you can still improve your uh improve this piece but for this purpose i'm already happy with what i created and so i took a picture of that one and um 
copied on my Procreate. Here's my Procreate app. I really, really love this app. Um, it's really amazing how they continue to improve and really um, it's a tool for every artist. And I'll show you why I love this. So see here, there's a, there's a pen and there's a lot of brush library. It's actually um, the default brushes are really good already. But you can actually create your own, um, your own, your own brush, and there's a lot of tutorial in YouTube where you can uh, explore that. And um, some of them are free, and some of them I bought. You know, sometimes it can really be ad addicting when you see a, an artist and you want to create like them and just buy their stuffs. <laughs> but anyway, so. Um, so this is how the the app looks like and this is the 12.9 ipad pro i think this is still the first generation and then i use my apple pencil uh, on this one so um another cool feature of procreate is it's made up of layers and you can add as you go and you don't need to, you can um, divide your process and create on each layer so you don't have to redo everything. If, for example, you don't like what you see and you can just erase that portion and not destroy the whole piece. So um, let me go back and just show you the brushes. So this one, you can actually, there's tons of brushes. So this one is a, oops. And this is a cool feature if you don't um if you want to undo what you've created you just use your two fingers and it will undo it for you um i just love the convenience and the shortcuts in this one so I, let's create another layer so we don't um see that it's like a chalk lettering and also like for example um chalk lettering you can create your um your chalk background and then they also have like watercolors so pretty i mean you can really explore this art cloud brushes you see that and then um what else um that one that's watercolor it's really a lot of uh, brushes in here and they have for sketching they have pencil technical pencil pastel artist crayon and then for inking they have dry ink studio pen flat marker brush pen so they have brush pen which um so this apple ipad is just amazing because it's pressure sensitive it's pressure sensitive. Oops, it's skipping. Let me use another brush. I'm not sure what's going on in there, but <laughs> let me. Okay, so here it's pressure sensitive, so you can create those thick and thin lines, right? See that? Thick, thin, thick, a thin, thick. <laughs> So I so since it's a, a different layer, I just delete that layer and I still have my uh, my layer. So I took a picture of that one and went ahead and write this. A different layer. Let's do that. So here. See, I can just, I think I want it bigger. See, I can just click that. Um, 
two fingers and it will just undo it. Slowly but surely, you see that? Our descending loop. Try to be consistent, but trying hard. <laughs> My R. Let me see if I can make that uniform. And then I wanted that to see I can move it and then oops so um, make sure that you're not um, you're not gonna cross that section right the Y there but at the same time you don't want to you want it to be balanced right I think okay, this is good so I went ahead and go back to my layer and write that two fingers thin, thick, thin, thick E, thin, pressure, light pressure Again, in modern calligraphy, you can actually um, create your own letters. So, oops. down stroke, entrance stroke, thin, thick, descending loop, right? So, your thick and thin lines. And then, so on this one as well, so I do want to run this pace, so I move that and go back to my writing um, layer. Let's see, I'm, I think I'm going to go back. And move it here because to center it, right? Okay, I think here I'm happy with that. I'm, well, I know I'm not on the correct layer, so go back to your layer. Um, as I mentioned, you'll just gonna be writing your letters um, multiple times, and during these times. I get the chance to just reflect, reflect on the Word of God as well. Um, this verse is just, you know, very challenging. But again, this is only possible if we ask for the grace of God. We try to be holy in every aspect of our conduct. And then don't forget this is from one Peter. One fifteen. Now you remove that layer, that's how it looks like. I mean, you can still improve it, but for this tutorial purposes, I think I'm, um, I'll call it, uh, I'll call it done. But what else can you do? You can um, change your background, go to your background layer, just change the colors, even though you, oh, where's that, here? Then you can just change your background, right? And then, or um, 
just go wide so even if you wrote the the words with a black pen you can actually go back and change the color so let's use this palette right here or maybe you can't see that let's do a colorful one and just And yellow. <laughs> I think this is our theme, right? I think our logo used the same color. And then what else? And some green, I think. Let's do that. So, and then you can just use a clipping mask and it will uh, go inside your letter. How cool is that, right? You can just. Um, explore this art and just um use your imagination and create beautiful things so um for this tutorial purposes i did create a background um like a modern abstract one and see <laughs> so i'll call this done but i have another one I want to show you how I do my lettering. Um, so I write the word again, and then um, on this one, I want to explore. I want to say be holy, right? And go from there. So I separated that be holy yourselves in every aspect of your conduct. I wanted some um, script style lettering and combine them with some print letters. You know, see that? I wanted some flourishes and i tried working on that one but i went ahead and created another one um here um tried to say be holy but i think i'm not happy with it so i went ahead and created another one i wanted some banners to emphasize the word and also um you know just to give it some character so i think i'm gonna go with this one i like it so i went ahead and write another one so and this time i only use two banners and i think i want to i do want to emphasize emphasize in every aspect because it is difficult to be holy in every aspect of our conduct and um, here's how it looks like in Procreate. So here's my, here's how it came. And let me show you how it was created. Showing you time replay. Time replay. Time lapse replay. So um, Procreate has already templates for banners. So that one is easy. Um, I love it just the convenience of it you can and you know spend your time um creating your letters versus mastering those banners so i love that so here you can see i just um add some more strokes until i am happy and just you know um it's good to combine some sans serif and uh the script 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 style of lettering and it's just trying to see what is what would make you happy so here that's how i've been doing it it's just oh my way of just um reflecting as well while you do this so here I added some colors and then just modifying it again until I'm happy and then again don't forget the the Bible verse and so um, I wanted to add more colors I added the green and the yellow and that's it that's our final piece let me show you how that looks so there you go be holy yourselves in every aspect of your conduct. You think I'm happy with it, but <laughs> I went ahead. It's just, I'm telling you guys, it can be so addicting depending on the time that's in your hands. That's what I'm telling you, you guys. 
have a lot of time in your hands you can explore this art and at the same time get to know jesus more and get closer to him by reflecting on his words so here is another piece with a different um with a different palette um i like this one as well just um, i love the blue and yellow combination i mean you can still um i think you can still play with the colors but um for this tutorial i think i'll call this uh final piece so that's it brothers and sisters i do want to thank you guys for tuning in i hope you're still here with me but um thank you thank you so much for um exploring this calligraphy and lettering and just um i'll see you in our facebook group if you want to learn more about this and just let's spread um let's spread the truth and share god's word to other people for this may god be praised